Right, this is a follow-up video to uh, my previous video where we talked about uh, measuring the bandwidth of uh, an oscilloscope. I would used uh, an old uh, analog oscilloscope for that one and we'll uh, do the same thing on a digital scope here. This time uh, we'll take a measure of the bandwidth of uh, my Tektronix TDS 2014. It's also a 100 megahertz uh, rated scope. Okay, So uh, there's actually two ways of doing this, just a quick review. You know, one is kind of a direct measure, and the other one we can actually do by measuring with rise time. So I'll show you the both techniques. And what we're talking about is, you know, basically the bandwidth of the scope is essentially it's guaranteed 3 dB bandwidth. Uh, all of the scope's vertical response, uh, you know, curves will essentially look something like this, where at low frequencies they're kind of flat, and then at some point they start rolling off. Once that response is down by 3 dB, or the half power point, that's uh, what's typically called the, the bandwidth uh, of the scope. Now the scope is certainly usable beyond that, uh, but certainly with less and less amplitude accuracy, of course, or amplitude response. Okay, So the 3 dB point is typically what's used. And the way to typically do the direct measure is to simply increase the frequency at the input to the scope until the response drops to 70.71%, which is 1 over square root of 2, which is the half power point, which is how we measure 3 dB and we can calculate it this way uh, by taking the measured response divided by what the actual response is taking the log base 10 of that multiplying by 20 that gives us how many dB down we are in response and when the measured response gets down to uh, the 70.71 percent that will give us essentially 3 dB okay now, of course this assumes that the signal source the cables etc that we're using to drive the scope are essentially all flat over that frequency range. They're not varying significantly, and I've already verified that with the equipment that I have here, certainly for these 100 megahertz scopes. Okay, so I'm using a this uh, uh, Tektronix AFG3252, which can go up to 240 megahertz. I'm going to have it output a sine wave, start off at one megahertz here, and I'm using uh, two volts peak to peak. If we take a look at the scope here, uh, there's the signal. I've got the measurement turned on there, and you can see it's kind of bouncing back and forth between 1.98 and 2 volts peak to peak. So, uh, and the other thing that's very important is to, because we're dealing with signals that get up into the RF frequency range, uh, we want to make sure that uh, the signal line coming from the signal generator gets properly terminated. So I've got a, a 50 ohm through termination right here. Uh, that's what this guy is. Okay, so that terminates this line to 50 ohms going into the scope. Typically, 100 megahertz scopes don't have the ability of changing the input impedance of the scope to 50 ohms, so we're using the through ter terminator. So, really, the, the method is, is kind of simple um, for doing these digital scopes, just like the analogs. We would just uh, start turning this frequency up. Okay, now as I turn it up, you'll notice that the, the waveform is kind of doing some, you know, kind of undulating there. That's because I've got the uh, the way the acquisition mode set up here to averaging and I'm doing that to kind of get rid of any of the noise that's on there and stabilize my response a little bit. So the other thing you want to be careful of, especially when you start cranking the frequency up here, is to start increasing your uh, your horizontal time scale to keep, keep a couple of visible waveforms on here. The problem is if you go too high in frequency, if you've got the, the sweep speed set too low, the sample rate may not be high enough on the scope and you'll start aliasing the signal. So by keeping the sweep speed up and keeping a recognizable signal as we crank the frequency up here, you'll kind of ensure that you don't uh, do any aliasing. So let's kind of crank this up to, uh, let's go up to, say, see where we are at 50 megahertz, so at half of the rated bandwidth. So half of the rated bandwidth, there's my signal, and I'm measuring 1.78 volts. So remember, we're putting in 2 volts peak to peak. Okay, We could run a quick calculation here on the calculator say 1.78 divided by 2 okay and we take uh, the 10 base log of that times 20 and that says that I'm down 1 dB so at half of the rated bandwidth of this scope 100 megahertz the response is down by 1 dB okay so we can kind of see see where we are so let's keep going up let's go up to uh, the 100 megahertz rating of the scope here okay and uh, so I'll crank that up to 100 megahertz right there and now let's take a look at what we've got on the scope. Okay, so there's my signal, and if we measure it, it's uh, 1.6, it's bouncing between 1.60, 1.62, so let's call it 1.61. Okay, now let's do uh, that same calculation here 1.61 divided by 2. 
I'm going to take the 10 base log of that times 20. So that means we're down 1.88, about 1.9 dB down. So the scope is rated to 100 megahertz to be, you know, uh, not down, you know, 3 dB or less uh, down at 100 megahertz, and we're only down 1.9 dB. So I've certainly met the 100 megahertz bandwidth limitation. Let's go until we actually get to the 3 dB bandwidth. Let's see what it is. And uh, that measurement would be at, this will be at 1.41 volts. So I'm just going to keep increasing the frequency and kind of see that happening here. I'm going to do that until I get to about 1.4, 1.41. So let's crank up a little bit more. So I'm at 1.42 there. And let's go up one more click here. Bounce about 1.42. 1.40, so it's bouncing between 1.42 1.40. I would call that, that's probably a good measure of the 3 dB bandwidth. And we take a look at the frequency, and I'm at 131 megahertz. Okay, so this 100 megahertz scope actually has got a 3 dB bandwidth of uh, 131 megahertz. So that's making the measurement using kind of the direct measurement technique. Okay, uh, just by you know, putting in a signal source and measuring it until it goes down. Now, uh, another way to kind of look at and estimate the bandwidth of the scope is to measure the scope's rise time. Okay. Now, in order to do this, uh, we also have to make some assumptions. We either have to put in an extremely fast digital edge, okay, uh, really, really fast, or at least know how fast that is, and it should ideally be faster, significantly faster than the rise time of the scope. And, uh, and we'll use this, and assuming that the the scope has got a kind of a simple Gaussian type of response. Um, this equation basically holds in terms of estimating bandwidth from rise time. Uh, so if you take the factor of 0 0.35 divided, divided by the actual measured rise time, that'll give you an estimate of the 3 dB bandwidth. Uh, of course, again, this assumes kind of a, a, a given response, a simple you know, single pole roll-off type of response, uh, which may or may not be true for the scope you're, you're using. So. Um, use this with care it's really just good as an estimate okay and uh, now if you don't have access to an extremely fast rising edge to go make this measurement um, the fact is that you're probably going to have a rise time that's going to be somewhere in the same neighborhood as the scope so how do you account for that and the way you would account for that is that uh, again assuming that everything's got the same kind of simple response the measured rise time would essentially be the RMS sum of, of the actual rise time Okay, of the signal, plus the actual rise time of the scope, plus maybe any rise time of the cables or probe or anything that's attached. In this case, we don't have a probe or anything like that attached, and the cables have got, you know, a couple of gigahertz of bandwidth, so we're okay with that. So we can just kind of use this basic estimate. Okay, now in my case, I've measured the actual rise time of this signal generator in the past on a very wide band scope and it's about 2.1 nanoseconds so I, I know what that uh, actual rise time is what I don't know is what the scope rise time is so but I can actually measure the rise time of my signal generator on the scope and since we know these two quantities we can just simply just rearrange uh, the equation to look like this so I can actually say that the rise time of the scope is equal to the measured rise time that I'm getting minus or squared that and then minus the square of the actual rise time. That'll give me the scope's rise time. Once I have that, I can enter that into this equation and estimate the bandwidth of the scope. So let's go do that. I'm going to set uh, uh, the frequency here down to something small. Let's go to say 10, uh, let's see, uh, let's go back here. Let's go back to sine wave and let's go to frequency and measure that, set that to say 10 megahertz. Okay. I'm going to slow this down, and I'm going to switch back over to a square wave here. Okay, so I have a 10 megahertz square wave going into the scope here. And I'm going to change the measurement on the scope. Uh, instead of showing peak to peak, I'm going to change that until it shows me rise time. Okay, so now it's uh, uh, let's see, showing me, let's see if I can get that to kind of focus in there, it's showing me rise time. Okay, and if I take a look at that, it's actually showing me a value of about 3.4 3.96, 3.4 nanoseconds. Let's kind of get a couple cycles on there. So let's call it 3.4, 3.45. Let's call it 3.45 because it's kind of bouncing back and forth between them. So again, if I take and plug that in for this equation here, okay, so I can take that measured response, 3.45 nanoseconds, square that, and I know the actual rise time was 2.1 nanoseconds. I'm going to square that, and I subtract those two and take the square root of that, that tells me that the rise time of the scope 
is about 2.73 nanoseconds. 2.7, we'll call it 2.74. Okay. Now we'll leave, well actually we'll just leave the number right in there. So now I can take that same number, that 2.7372 nanoseconds, okay, and I'll uh, invert that and multiply by 0.35, and that tells me the estimated rise, or the estimated bandwidth of the scope is 120, basically call it 128 megahertz. That's pretty darn close to the 131 megahertz that we measured directly. So uh, certainly within uh, just a few percent, okay, and uh, and well within you know kind of estimating you know whether you're trying to figure out whether the scope is a 50 meg or a 100 meg or whatever scope type of thing, you can very easily do that. So that shows you two ways of measuring uh, a oscilloscope bandwidth. Something you might want to worry uh, have to consider again is that the, the response of the scope may not have that kind of flat response. So measuring that rise time, you know, may not give you exactly the same you know type of result here. Um, and also, another question I've gotten is, is how usable is the scope at higher frequencies? So let's kind of get, get back to a sine wave here, and let's adjust this frequency. Let's go back up to, you know, is that 130 megahertz or so, okay? And uh, so I can actually see I, I've got a, a usable signal there. Of course, it's down, uh, in that case, it's down about 3 dB. But if I keep cranking the frequency up, okay, let's go up to the, the highest frequency I can go with this uh, generator is 240 megahertz. So even at 240 megahertz, I still have a usable signal there, okay? Now how big is it? Let's go back to our measure here and change that measurement now to back to our peak-to-peak -peak, uh, signal measurement. Uh, there it is. So I'm at 540, 560, 540, 560. We'll call it 550 millivolts because it's bouncing back and forth between those two. Actually, it's kind of, yeah, so it's bouncing back and forth. Let's call it 550 millivolts. How far down is that? So 0.5, let's turn this calculator back on here. 550 millivolts divided by the 2000 millivolts which was my input signal and I take uh, the log of that times 20. So I'm down about uh, 11 dB. So it's 10 to 11 dB down even at 240 megahertz which is you know almost two and a half times the rated bandwidth of the scope. So uh, so this scope you know you certainly still use it to look at uh, see if a signal is there you know at that bandwidth. Uh, one thing that you may find is not all scopes will behave uh, as nicely as this one does. Sometimes uh, maybe the trigger circuits might start giving up the ghost and they won't trigger reliably on a signal that is well beyond the bandwidth of the scope. Uh, again, it's going to depend a lot on the particular scope that you're measuring. So uh, anyway, um, I know some guys that had some questions about uh, you know, measuring the bandwidth of a digital scope. And uh, this was just another quick example of how you could go do that and get an idea of how usable that scope might be uh, at uh, frequencies beyond where it's rated for. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, again, any questions you have, feel free to let me know. Thank you very much.